वेलकम टू सुब्रमनी दिस वीडियो इज ऑल्सो गोइंग टू बी अ लिटिल ऑल ओवर द प्लेस काइंड ऑफ अ थिंग लाइक आई विल आंसर यूर क्वेश्चन लाइक दस वैल्यू इन्वेस्टिंग वर्क वॉट हैज़ वर्क फॉर मी वेदर आई विल कंटिन्यू टू डू दैट हाउ आई पिकड अप सम स्टॉक्स एंड आई बीन अक्यूज ऑफ सर्वाइवरशिप बायस so let me start at the very beginning i started my life as an investor maybe sometime in 1978 79 uh, when i was in class 11 and class 12 right so very late by uh, warren buffett's standards but then i didn't have money right so how much money would you have at that stage maybe 2 3 000 rupees not that it's a very small sum but to remember it is 1978 79 and then i started trading right so it could be some 50 shares it could be some 100 shares but yes that's what i started doing and i also if i made an investment it was simply because i was getting good dividends that was my premise for buying shares and i did not even know that used to be called value investing i was still a kid in uh, college i had not heard of these words i have not heard of warren buffett or any of those people uh, and i was in a very gujarati investing environment where friends were investing of course many friends were not investing also so largely in that atmosphere i could go and pick up some shares and uh, i remember reading magazine uh, uh, the magazine called uh, business india it was just making its uh, entry i think it must have been 77 78 somewhere when they made an entry and i used to read it cover to cover uh, hoping to find some which share to buy i had no clue how to look for it and then i found people in the market i knew people who were going into the ring and then uh, then slowly i started investing and so today i was i was talking to somebody and i said uh, the uh, success of investing is largely survivor uh, if you have been a survivor for what uh, 21 plus 22 that is about 43 years if you have survived and you have you have been able to uh, say my house can be uh, my my day to day expenses can be met by my portfolio and that happened to me even 15 17 years ago or 20 years ago so it didn't doesn't really uh, that's the success now is it a great success no because uh, i have classmates who would have perhaps uh, 1000 times my net worth and i would have classmates who have perhaps much less net worth than what i have and uh, i think everybody is happy so do i what do i do should i should i set up for myself standards uh, which are very high and uh, feel miserable about what i have done or feel happy about what uh, i have achieved right so all these things are possible now value investing uh, very many people ask uh, does value investing work in fact i remember in one of the one cafe mutual uh, event uh, prashant jain was a first speaker i think first or second speaker and so we met at the speakers lounge and i told uh, prashant jain i think uh, value investing is dead and uh, he started laughing and he said when 10 people like you to say value investing is dead that is the time when value investing will work now it's very important to know for value investing to work it has to be a long run if value investing may not work in 3 uh, months or 6 months and in retrospect you will be able to see that this was a bubble so obviously from 1979 to 2022 obviously i've seen markets ups downs etc how i reacted to a market being uh, market doing nothing from 1996 to 2003 i think made a man out of me i must have been just uh, that was just 34 in 96 and by the time i came out 41 it's a very defining period of anybody's life where the market did nothing so i was just wondering what to do what else to do should i do luckily that time there was some other work which was uh, which kept me busy uh but otherwise life would have been far more difficult than what it is now because uh, then then what if the market had done something so you, there, therefore you get into value investing and you know value investing will work in the long run but you don't know whether it will work in the short run so you get into short term trading you lose some money you gain some money you then also do short term trading with uh, with delivery without delivery you buy in the morning sell in the afternoon or things like that you do day trading you will continue to do all this if you are an equity player the discipline that is required in value investing of saying i don't mind looking stupid in the short run but i have to look good in the long run now take a take a person who has invested in i was started investing in 78 79 and i invested in uh and deepak parekh hdfc limited and in dhirubhai ambani's reliance right those were the times when 
you invest then you do not know when the share price goes up you do not know whether it is because the company is doing well the eps is growing and the pe is growing is it being manipulated in a country where so many shares which i have bought uh, are today not visible there is no rk there is no pateja forging there is no united group right these are all shares which i bought and i learned a lot of things from that that one particular community can be very flamboyant but cannot produce results some uh, community which is never visible in the media or anywhere actually provides results my best companies do not appear on media at all so whether it is hgfc whether it is supreme whether it is the murugappa group whether it is uh, uh, the sundaram group right and the of these people they just do or mncs right uh, the colgate nestle hul uh, siemens uh, cummins they don't appear on media at all so what is the criteria that you use what what happens when you invest in 1980 in hjfc limited and you realize that if you had all kept all the shares it would have created far more wealth that's fine but how do you convince your mind that this is a great company in 1980 i knew nothing i had invested in two companies one was a nambani one was a parek and then i had invested in mncs was it better to continue investing in hul and colgate and png and nestle or should you look at uh, people like uh, uh, mr dirubai ambani and mr uh, rahul bajaj and mr deepak parekh what is there for you to pick up the good ones from the bad ones nothing you really are learning on the way so that is where you realize that value investing works in the long run but the ability to sit tight during difficult times is by having the ability to create other sources of income by which you don't have to touch your portfolio in a hurry right by uh, creating enough uh, insurance so that if somebody falls ill you don't touch the portfolio by creating a good qualification which says okay i'll be able to get a job if my business fails that is another type of insurance right so taking all kinds of adequate insurance to let value research work and let uh, i mean uh, then you start reading a graham and all that and you realize one thing the ability to look stupid or foolish in the long in the short run is very important to look good in the long run uh, also admitting to yourself and admitting to the world admitting on video admitting on your blog that you have made mistakes helps because it helps you keep uh, you keep yourself grounded right so which i think is a very useful parenting thing also that go and tell your children about your failures because otherwise there'll be too much pressure if you say oh i always got first rank i always did this in fact uh, if anything my daughter's uh, academic record gives me a complex it's not the reverse uh, i had no academic achievements comparable to what my daughter has achieved in a in a short life which is she is still a student right so uh, if you keep comparing yourself you will feel miserable but if you don't compare yourself you will not improve so finding that uh, nice line between how much to do external comparison how much to do internal comparison also helps you stay grounded on the value research uh, on the value uh, sorry sorry dhiren i used value research i mean in the value investing journey value research well i've been uh, using that for the last 20 years plus whatever how long however long it has uh, existed right so uh, these things do happen that uh, bits and pieces of your life uh, fit into the value investing mode into growth investing mode you do some uh, momentum trading you apply for an nfo you get it and you hold you apply for an ipo you get it and you hold sometimes you apply for an ipo you don't get sometimes you apply for an ipo and you get you sell off immediately and then you have regrets sometimes you hold on and then you have regrets right all these things all these combinations make you a good investor or a bad investor or whatever and the criteria has to be are you able to meet your goals that is that is the only question to answer because if i get more is there any the thing which is going to change in my life no will i continue to take the same number of vacations yes will i go on uh, 3 4 20 day vacations no will i go for 6 7 vacations of 3 4 days answer is yes so really nothing much changes in my life going forward but this is the process by which i have become a value investor so somewhere in the 90s uh, i realized that companies like deepak parikh's uh, jfc uh, 
or uh, dhirubhai ambani's uh, reliance and all our shares which are worth keeping in the long run but i still may have traded i may still be holding these shares it's not that i have gone to zero in these shares ever i don't i don't think i have too many shares but i still think that i should have at least 1000 shares of uh, reliance if i check out all my uh, wife's portfolio my portfolio my mother's portfolio if i check out i i'm sure i'll come up with say uh, 1000 shares at least Uh, or maybe no after the split maybe maybe 2 3 000 shares but the question is not uh, did i hold on to all the hdfc limited that i got did i hold on to all the hdfc bank that i got did i hold on to all the hdfc amc uh, shares which i got did i hold on to all the hdfc uh, life shares which i got answer is no because at some stage you have to take a call on valuation at some stage you have to take a call on uh, whether the promoter can be trusted so in hdfc's case i had to take that call uh, sometime in the mid 90s and after that i have not been uh, so in the jfc bank for example i'm not been a big seller at all in jfc limited i used to sell but by 94 95 i had made up my mind that this is a good group and there's no reason to sell so a combination of your reading of your learning of your talking to people of your investing experiences of your collecting dividends of saying oh i can reinvest this dividend you learn the whole process of value investing this is the only way to learn uh, some people think by reading you can learn you you can of course learn but you have to read and implement it right you learn read implement make money lose money that is what makes you a good investor uh can i teach uh, investing can i teach value investing it's extremely doubtful but if somebody comes lives with me and sees what all i do uh, it'll be very surprised because there is so much slack built into my life that i for long periods of time i do nothing <laughs> i'm just reading or i'm shooting or i'm watching youtube videos and so many ways to learn today right so all this put together makes you a value investor it tells you what values you should have in life it it, it tells you whether you have money or don't have money the, the way you are going to spend doesn't change much right so all this makes you a rounded personality and the fact that you have survived for 40 years is good enough thank you